Huge deposits of ice have been found beneath the surface of Mars satellite imaging from the Mars Express spacecraft suggests that there are vast deposits of water in the form of ice near the Martian equator. According to the collected data, the layer of ice buried under the surface of Red Plana is up to nearly 4 kilometers thick. The European Space Agency's Mars Express spacecraft has re-examined a geological formation called the Medusae Fossi Formation near the Red Planet's equator. The results of the analyses of the collected data, which were published in the journal, Geophysical Research Letters suggest that in this place there are gigantic deposits of water in the form of ice, which may be up to several kilometers thick. Scientists believe that billions of years ago, when Mars had a thick atmosphere and was a warmer and wetter planet, water flowed on its surface, carving out the gorges and canyons that are still visible today. Currently, Water on the red planet is found in the form of ice in the polar caps at the planet's poles and under its surface. Probes orbiting Mars have spotted traces of ice in many places, including on steep slopes, the appearance of which changes with the onset of Martian spring. As if melted ice flowed down and left dark traces. The new findings concern a formation near the equator called the Medusae Fossi Formation, MFF. These are vast deposits of sediment that stretch for about 5,000 kilometers along the planet's equator. Marking the boundary between the lowlands of the northern hemisphere and the cratered highlands of the southern hemisphere. In 2007, the Mars Express probe examined the MMF. These observations showed that the formation extends to a depth of about 2.5 kilometers and is clearly different from nearby areas of the Martian surface. However, it was not clear at that time what the discovered layers of Martian soil consisted of. However, new research provides the answer. We re-examined the MFF using newer data from the MARSIS radar, which is mounted on Mars Express. We discovered that these deposits are even thicker than we thought. They reach up to 3.7 kilometers deep, says Thomas Waters from the Smithsonian Institution in the USA. Interestingly, the radar signals match what we would expect to see in the case of layered ice and are similar to the signals we see from Mars polar caps, which we know are rich in ice, he adds. The Mars Express probe launched from Earth in 2003. In 2018, she found a lake of liquid, salty water deep under the polar cap of the south pole of the Red Planet, more on this in the text. A lake hidden under the surface was found on Mars. Two years later, it discovered three more salt lakes, more on this in the text. The Mars Express probe discovered more lakes under the Martian ice crust. Scientists made calculations and found that if all the ice trapped in the MMF were brought to the surface and melted, Mars would be covered with water 1.5 to 2.7 meters deep. Observations from Mars Express showed that MFF is relatively transparent to radar and has a low density, both characteristics that can be observed in ice deposits. However, Scientists checked in computer simulations whether it could be something else, such as dust or volcanic ash. If MFF were just a giant pile of dust, we would expect it to compact under its own weight, says study co-author Andrea Cicchetti from the National Institute of Astrophysics in Italy. This would create something much denser than what we actually see on Mars. And when we modeled the behavior of various ice-free materials, nothing reproduced the observed properties of MFF, he adds. According to analyses, MFF is ice mixed with Martian dust. And its deposits are located under several hundred meters of Martian soil. These gigantic stores of ice could not have formed in the planet's current climate. They come from a time when rivers flowed on the surface of Mars and the planet was wetter. 
signs of which can still be seen today. The latest analysis challenges our understanding of the MFF formation and raises as many questions as it answers, says Colin Wilson from ESA, where he deals with, among others, Mars Express Probe. How long ago did these ice deposits form and what was Mars like then? If confirmed to be water ice, these massive deposits will change our understanding of Mars climate history. Anybody of ancient water would be a fascinating target for exploration by humans or robots, he emphasizes. The discovered ice deposits may prove extremely valuable for future crewed missions to the Red Planet. Leading space agencies are planning such missions. Unfortunately, the MFF deposits are covered by hundreds of meters of dust, making them inaccessible for at least the next few decades. But each piece of ice we find helps us build a better picture of where water previously flowed on Mars and where it can be found today, Wilson said. The most precise moon landing in history, but with problems. On Friday, January 19, the Japanese slim lander touched down on the lunar surface. The successful landing introduced Japan to the group of countries, after the USA, Russia, China and India, that have achieved this feat. However, not everything went according to plan. Although the landing, as admitted by the vice president of the Japanese National Space Agency, was the most precise feat of this type in history, there was a problem with the solar panels. Japan became the fifth country in the world to successfully land a probe on the lunar surface. New technological solutions allowed Japanese engineers to land closer to a specific landing site than any previous mission. However, the slim, smart lander for investigating Moon, probe suffered a solar cell failure during landing. The Japan National Space Agency, JAXA, confirms that SLIM successfully landed on the lunar surface in the target area near the Shioli crater, south of the equator. After landing, communication with the ship was established. SLIM reached the lunar surface. It communicates with our ground station and responds precisely to commands from Earth, Hitoshi Kuninaka. Vice President of JAXA, said at a press conference after the landing. However, it appears that solar cells do not produce electricity and the spacecraft runs only on batteries. The battery will last a few more hours. These hours will constitute the remaining operating time of SLIM. He added, it is unclear why the solar panels refused to cooperate. Unlike previous lunar landers, which landed on a relatively flat area, SLIM's destination was a slightly sloped crater slope. Observers suggest that SLIM may have simply rolled over upon landing, damaging the solar panels and preventing them from pointing at the sun. Kuninaka said there is currently insufficient data to determine the position or orientation of the spacecraft. However, if some sunlight reaches the solar cells, there is a chance that SLIM will come back to life. The SLIM spacecraft was built to demonstrate a new navigation system capable of landing precisely on the lunar surface. That's why the lander was also referred to as the lunar sniper. According to Kuninaka, the lander most likely achieved its goal and landed on the moon with an unprecedented accuracy of 100 meters to the previously determined landing site, which is a big step compared to previous attempts, which ended several to several dozen kilometers from the designated site. SLIM used navigation technology to image the surface while flying over the moon and quickly locate itself by matching the images to maps in the onboard computer's memory. However, it may take up to a month to verify that SLIM has actually settled near its target. Looking at the data, I believe that SLIM certainly made a precise landing with an accuracy of 100 meters. Of course. As we informed, 
A thorough analysis of the information will take about a month, said Kuninaka. Battery power allowed the lander to operate for several hours after landing. The mission managers, knowing that Slim had little time, used it to launch scientific instruments and collect valuable data. They also turned off all other non-essential instruments to minimize power consumption in the hopes of maximizing operations on the lunar surface and thus scientific benefits. JAXA's plan was for SLIM to operate on solar power for about a month after landing. In social media messages, JAXA admitted that until the power loss occurred, all collected data and images from the landing and the lunar surface had been successfully transmitted to mission control on Earth. Agency representatives added that there is quite a lot of it. Their analysis is currently being carried out. JAXA is expected to provide further information about the SLIM mission at the end of the week.